financial problems, elder law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now, here's your host, Ken Gross. Welcome to this segment of Law and Reality. Today's topic is probate fights, things you'd like to avoid. Brian Small, nice to see you. Always a pleasure to be here, Ken. Jeffrey Kirshner. Nice to be back again, Ken. And incoming special guest, Jeff Linden. Good morning, Ken. Jeff is an attorney at Thav Gross. He's our probate law expert, and he's also a commercial litigator. So I invited him on the show today because we're going to focus on probate, and we're going to kind of bring, bring probate into the show on a more regular basis. Are the we going to make probate exciting? Probate is exciting. Or make it sexy again. Why is pro probate has two sides to it, right, Jeff? Probate yeah. has the administration side, which I would say isn't exactly thrilling. But probate's also like a boxing ring. It has probate fights. And when it's not necessarily a good thing, but if you're in a fight, fights do have in, are interesting, and we're going to talk about some of that as, as we go in the show. So, Jeff, how did you get into handling probate matters? I got into handling probate matters um, through commercial litigation. I was doing litigation, and uh, I was asked to uh, sit in through some depositions and some probate contests and it evolves slowly. The probate contests and the fights are, uh, you know, are uh, just as, as hotly contested and difficult and challenging as heavy commercial litigation sometimes. Yeah. It's funny, people don't realize that you, know, you think of probate kind of as something different because it's always focused on avoiding probate, doing a will and a trust, or doing a trust so that you don't have to go to probate, but probate's also the forum when there's a contest or a dispute over a will or over a trust. And in that case, it's commercial litigation. So the background in that you need as a lawyer, it's the same process. It's the same thing as fighting in circuit court over a malpractice case. You have to litigate. You have to admit evidence. You have to deal with the judge. You have to have witnesses. You have that whole big fight, which is costly and a problem and something you want to avoid. But it's also a reality that you can't avoid. Well, sometimes. it also, don't forget, it also deals with... Uh, when you have minor children and there's guardianship issues, there's it deals with adults when you're trying to when you have to try and take control of your parent or grandparents' uh, existence to help them because you, they didn't put together the the right uh, estate planning documents oh. to to be made conservator and guardian over them to to help them. There's probate issues in everyday Everywhere. life yeah. all the time with minors. With kids, with a, with the adults, you have the situation where mom and dad doesn't want the conservator appointed and is refusing, but they're not capable of acting on their own. Right. But let's let's take a minute. Give us a rundown on how the normal. Here, here's the normal scene that we've talked about on the show before. We talk about doing a revocable living trust and funding it so that you can avoid probate, so you don't have to go through the process of proving the will and distributing the assets in in, in that process. If you right. do have to go through probate, walk us through that process. The normal non-contested probate process is really just uh, filing a petition if you want formal proceedings with a judge supervising them or an application if you want formal proce informal proceedings where the judge isn't in the day-to-day -day management Well, wouldn't of you it. normally want informal to get it done quicker? Nine times out of ten, you'd want to do informal. All right, so what, how does that process work? How, much, how long does it take? How many papers have to be filed? Who does? Who takes care of it? Well, I would take care of it as the lawyer, or what happens is the person named in a will, in, which is what you would have in probate, is the personal representative, and they're given legal authority to handle the affairs of the person who died. And they're the ones who need legal papers to go to the banks, financial institutions, and other people to say, I have the right to make decisions and so, move stuff So around. they come in, the personal rep comes in to see you, and then you go ahead and, is it a probate petition? What do you, what do you prepare and file with the probate court in order to make it happen? There are a number of documents you have to file. You have to file the original will with the court, then you file your application, and then you file things that are called testimonies and supple testimonies, which prove to the court 
who the lawful heirs are or who the, uh, the gifties, the devisees named in the will are and what the, um, the instructions that the decedent left. So were. is there like a, a point in time you file all the papers, does the judge then stamp it approved so you can then distribute the assets or how, how do you get to the point of after you file the papers you free, you're free you able to distribute the assets to the, to the beneficiaries, to the kids if, if those are the heirs and then close the estate? It takes about four to six months uh, for the average case because there are some deadlines that you have to wait. You have to publish in the newspaper a notice and give people four months notice to creditors to make claims if the person who died owed money to people like credit cards. Uh, car so you loans publish the notice. Like you go through the process, you give your testimony and then you'll get um, an order awarding probate and if you need certain documents to transfer certain pieces of property that need paperwork like cars uh, you know, or houses or accounts. So, you so get af those. after you've published, are you able to go to the court and did you, do you ask them to issue an order? And is it different for informal versus formal in terms of getting that order? Yes. Uh, you do go to court. If it's informal, um, you file an affidavit saying that you've done everything you're supposed to do. The court will pro functa stamp it and you'll be done. Wait, pro funct? What is pro funct? <laughs> Profunct is a mishmash of pro forma and perfunctory. Okay, there you go. <laughs> um, all right, so that's so, so. Then once you get that approval, then you can distribute <coughs> the assets, and then you have to file an accounting at the end. Or you what? file an accounting and a sworn statement to close the estate, and then it's done, assuming everything was done correctly. All right, so so this is the side that when we started the show off, we said is nece not necessarily the most exciting <coughs> side of probate, but you can see there's a lot of paperwork that has to be filed, and that's why when we talk about on the show trying to avoid probate, if you've got the if you've got your fully prepared estate plan, including a revocable living trust, and you funded all your assets into the trust, or your other assets are transferring outside of probate, like your, your, your real estate between husband and wife automatically passes to the, spout, to the surviving spouse, then you can avoid the time and expense of that probate process. Yeah, but the probate process, for, especially for real estate, comes into, it gets a little tricky sometimes. I find that I have a lot of clients whose grandparents owned a house, then mom inherited the house, now they've inherited the house, but nothing's been probated. What do we do about that? So wait, so, so I mean, just people are just living in it, and now you want to sell it to an outsider and you got a problem? Yeah, how do we fix that? We're going to take care of that issue right after the break. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your savings, and more. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Samasco Law wants you to know that laws are changing. Today, the average cost of nursing home care is $85,000 a year. With proper planning, we can help protect your life savings and get you the Medicaid and nursing home benefits you deserve. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Fav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. 
You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. All right, so Brian, what you're saying is generation to generation have passed away. The same family is living in the house, so they never bothered to do anything. Nobody upset the apple cart, but now what are they doing? They're trying to sell the property. Yeah, well, it's they not just the title. same. You know what? I, I find it where now you've got, you had grandma and grandpa, then you have mom and dad, and then you have 18 siblings below that. And all of a sudden, there's, there's all Somebody sorts of problems. Somebody wants to refinance the property or mortgage the property right. or sell the property, exactly. and, and you need title. And everyone in the family thinks that they are entitled to the property. Well, then you got to fight. That's the problem. Right. Then you have a fight. If right. you don't have a fight, how do you handle that? Um, what you have to do, unfortunately, it's a little complicated, but it's not difficult to do, is you have to go back to the first person's estate who owned the property and probate that estate get orders transferring that estate into, say the husband died first, into mom's estate who died second, and then you have to probate mom's estate to get it out of mom's estate to get to, it ultimately to down kids. to whoever has so it now. So you have now. to go estate to estate in order to get it done. You can't just say, listen, we're skipping, you can't file one petition to cover four different estates? No, you have to file separate petitions. And is that something, is that something you could do all at once, or does it have to, you have to file the first and let it you can take a couple months and then do the second. You can file them all at once and, and ask the judge to consolidate them under the circumstances. It's up to the judges whether or not in their court management, whether or not they, they consolidate it or not. Most do uh, because they don't want the cases in their courtrooms you know, for very long. But you have to file separate petitions with separate fees and you know it's double, triple, quadruple the paperwork. And, uh, so but there's, the hearings there's the expense, same. there's time, but it can get done. It's just kind of a pain in the ass. And, through and, it right. down to. and you know where I see it come in a lot also is people think if I leave it in mom's name, in her estate, it's not mine. So my creditors can't get to it, which is a completely false statement. Your creditors, if you owe money and you've inherited a piece of property, the fact that you haven't probated it into your estate does not mean it's not yours. Could the creditor effectively come in and probate it into your estate for you well, and claim if you, the asset? I don't know about that. I'm, I'm sure that there's some methodology to do that. I do know this, that in the world of bankruptcy, a bankruptcy bank trustee, trustee can, get to it. can get to it. So before we get to the probate dispute, we often talk about if you have a estate plan, a revocable living trust, a pour over will, durable power of attorney for when you're living, and a patient advocate, if you have funded the trust, which means you've transferred the assets into the trust while you were living, that's the time you avoid probate. Yes. When you avoid probate, you still do some kind of publication, right, after you pass away? Yeah, there's rules for trust administration um, that track the probate rules. So you'd still publish a notice uh, to creditors so that they could make claims. Um, it's, it's just that you don't have to go to court. You don't have to pay fees. You don't have to schedule the property. And you don't have to get court orders allowing you to do every little thing. Okay. So the big thing that I want people to realize is even when you are avoiding probate, it's not that there, there's still responsibilities as the trustee under the trust to publish notice. So you're giving notice to creditors. And that cuts off any ability of them to file a claim after a certain number of days. Four months. Four months, which is a short period of time. You file that notice, you publish it in the legal news. If there's no claim asserted in four months, the creditor has no claim. It's actually a nice way of, it's a good, smart thing to do, taking care of cutting out the credit card debt and things like that, which are things that you know Brian and I love to do. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about probate dispute. I have a case for you. And Jeff kind of gave me the... Uh, basic facts of a more complicated case, but I kind of converted it into one that I thought would be good for the show, and I'm going to call it The Evil Sister. Here are the facts. Margaret is mom. She's 88 years old. She's got two, sis two daughters, Sarah, the sweet sister, Ellen, the evil sister. Mom's status is this. She has dementia. She's forgetful. She's on the decline. She's got $400,000 in cash. She has a house worth $200,000, no mortgage. She's got her personal belongings. She has a trust. Mom is her own trustee. It's the self, it, it, she's the sole trustee. But then Sarah, the sweet sister, is the first successor trustee. And then Ellen, the evil sister, 
is the second trust su successor trustee. That make, means make that sure Sarah can act. Everybody has to understand that you're your own trustee of your own trust while you're alive. When if you, you choose to be. If you, unless you make it, you can put somebody else in charge of your trust, but generally you're your own trustee. When you die, you have a successor trustee. Good point. Now the beneficiaries of the trust are half to Sarah, half to Ellen. Seems Noth fair. Nothing unusual. Here's what happens. Sarah goes to Florida with a friend. Sarah's the sweet sister. Ellen, the evil sister, takes mom to their estate planning attorney. Ellen convinces mom that Sarah is stealing her money. Mom makes Ellen, the attorney in fact under the power of attorney, the patient advocate, and the first and only successor trustee under the trust. She changes the trust to make the beneficiaries 90% evil Ellen and 10% sweet Sarah. Mom dies two weeks later before Sarah even knows anything to do anything. Sarah has called Thav Gross and is coming in to meet with Jeff Linden wondering what can she do She's now not in control of the trust, and she's a 10% beneficiary, and evil sister has got fangs sticking out of her mouth saying, nah, 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 you can't do a thing. We're going to come up to a break, and when we get back, Jeff's going to walk us through the process of how Sarah pursues her claim. This is what we call a probate fight. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you're approaching retirement and don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your investments, and your savings. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Putting a solid strategy in place with Somasco Law legally protects your assets as well as your wishes. Since a will doesn't cover you medically or financially, Somasco Law goes beyond ordinary asset management protection to safeguard everything you have. How much can you afford to lose? Call Somasco Law today. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Thav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Thav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Time for announcements. I want to remind our viewers to listen to us Tuesdays 11.30 and Saturdays 7 a.m. for Law & Reality Live on Praise 102.7. On Thursdays 3 to 4 p.m., Law & Reality Now on 9.10 a.m. Be sure and sign up for our monthly contest. Free $50 Visa gift card, Law & Reality hat, and copy of my book, Dump Your Debt. Go to the websites, click on the link, and you can sign up. We have seminars coming up on Wednesday, April 25, 6 to 7.30 p.m., How to Avoid and How to Survive Probate. Estate planning is a must. Jeff Linden's going to join us. He's our probate expert and commercial litigator. We're going to go over all the elements of an estate plan. Brian Small and I are going to walk you through that process, the documents you need to have while you're living, the important documents that you need relative to your death how to avoid probate, and how to handle a probate fight when it happens. Attendees get a free $300 gold certificate off the cost of an estate plan. Sign up at thavgross.com or lawandreality.com. Then on Wednesday, May 9th, 6 to 7.30 p.m., 
Freedom means being debt free. We're going to have a debt relief seminar focusing on all the means and methods that we use to eliminate debt, solutions with bankruptcy, solutions outside of bankruptcy. The focus is not as much on eliminating debt as it is on preserving your future income. Jeff Kirshner will join us for a special, uh, uh, special segment addressing disability claims and workers' compensation. Attendees get a free copy of my book, Dump Your Debt. Sign up at thavgross.com, lawnreality.com, or call 888-235-HELP. I want to remind our viewers, you're always welcome to come to Thav Gross for a free consultation. Just go to the websites, click help, or, co or call the office at 888-235-HELP. Debt issues, tax issues, estate planning issues, business issues, probate issues, elder law issues with Pat Samasco, disability issues with Jeff Kirshner. It's all available to you. Just go to the websites, request the consult, or sign up, or, or call 888-235-HELP. Also, go to the websites for free reports. There's a great report on how to save your home from foreclosure, business formations and loans and grants for small businesses in Michigan, and the Retiree's Guide, from so uh, Retiree's Guide to Social Security by Pat Samasco. I want to thank our sponsors, Thav Gross, Samasco Law, Jeff Kirshner Law. Now back to the show. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. All right, so we've got ourselves a probate fight. Sarah comes in. Jeff, what can Sarah do? Sarah, is she's not the trustee. She's not, she's a 10% beneficiary. And Ellen, maybe we should have called her Evelyn for Evelyn. All the Evelyns out there are going to hate that, po that point, though. Right. So Ellen is in control. What is Sarah's remedy? Sarah's remedy is at this point to file a petition to contest the trust and the will and to have... Uh, Evelyn uh, removed as a fiduciary or trustee and to have her surcharge for any costs or monies that she has uh, pilfered away from the original plan. So when you say file a petition, what is that? Is like we were talking about filing papers before. You file papers and Evelyn is removed or what happens? This is the same or as Or Ellen, Evelyn. who happens to be the character. Oh, we changed her name. We changed her name. <laughs> to protect um, the guilty. <laughs> at this point, um, the, the, the title of the paper is the same. It's called the petition, but it works the same as filing a, a complaint. In like a, a lawsuit? Just a lawsuit. You have, you're filing a lawsuit. The same rules apply. Now you're in litigation. So what are the grounds? How, what, what, what the, I mean, here, so Ellen will get an attorney. Correct. And she'll fight it. And then Sarah's, you're, you're in, Sarah's hired us, and we're fighting Ellen, okay, in that case. Ellen's attorney says she didn't do anything wrong. She did what Mom wanted. What's the, what, what grounds do you have to, how, how do we win this for Sarah? Sarah has to prove that her mom, when she changed her documents, didn't have testamentary capacity, meaning she, she didn't have the mental competence to do what she did. She didn't understand what she was doing. Or that uh, Ellen uh, exercised what's called undue influence, which is through various circumstances, uh, her will overrode her mother's will and essentially duped or forced her mom well, to make Well, let's talk about dupe because it, 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 let's talk about both of them because we know mom's got dementia. So the question there is, does that, is that the equivalent of lacking testamentary capacity? But let's do undue influence first. We know Ellen lied to mom by saying Sarah's stealing your money. 
Is that exercising undue influence or misrepresentation? Is that a grounds to unravel what Ellen's done? It's a step along the way. It's not the end of the story. Um, you have to prove a lot more. You have to prove that the lie and, and mom's condition was such that mom would have just blindly accepted the lie without doing any other investigation of her own and that she was so reliant on Ellen that Ellen's will became, will in the sense of intent, became mom's intent. Kind of overrode right. her. Correct. But you, her so this sounds to me mm. that in court you're going to need some sort of medical evidence, mainly of her, of mom's treating doctors. Yeah, at this point you would be taking, uh, you would be subpoenaing her medical records, you'd be taking uh, depositions of treating physicians and psychiatrists, you'd probably be hiring an expert to do an independent psychological But what about, what about, uh, bringing in like friends of mom who can Character testify witnesses. to her her all of that comes into play physical and mental capacity. What about enemies of Ellen? Enemies of Ellen come into play I too. I like that one. If if <laughs> Ellen said uh, to anybody what her plan was going to be, or that she was pissed off at Sarah, or that she had some intent to do this, I don't or know if she upset. was pissed off, but she wanted it was a money grab, ninety percent versus fifty percent. You would, explore, you would explore through litigation discovery every avenue to find every uh, item that you could to prove well, what that about, Ellen took over mom's so will. So dementia, is deme dementia versus lacking testamentary capacity. At what point, we all, it happens to, uh, if we live long enough, dementia comes. You become forgetful and first you lose your short-term memory, then the long-term memory goes. At what point... Do you lack testamentary capacity? Are those the same things? You can't just be a little, just being a little bit forgetful doesn't mean you, you don't have capacity to change your will, does it? Or your no. trust? No, it doesn't. In fact, testamentary capacity is a pretty low bar uh, in the state of Michigan. Uh, you need more capacity to enter into a commercial contract than you do to do a will. Uh, they're not the same standard. Uh, basically, um, you can have dementia, but as long as at the moment that you're signing your documents, you're aware of who your your natural, they call it bounty, are your, your heirs and what you're giving and what your estate is, then even if you have a moment of lucidity, you can be held to have had capacity at that moment. So here's the, the next time we have you back on the show, I want to talk about and focus, how can you do a plan to avoid evil Sarah from stepping into this situation because once it's happened Sarah's got a fight on her I'm saying e evil Ellen Sarah has a fight on her hands to get this taken care of Sarah will ultimately prevail on the facts that I gave you because Sarah is right because we know that Ellen's motives were wrong and took advantage of mom but that's the benefit of us telling you the facts based upon being the storyteller how it's proven in court can be another thing. That's why you need to fight sometimes when you're in probate court. Have a great week. We'll be back next week with Law and Reality. Thanks for watching.